keep it keep it with center a center parting and also kind of ear to ear the hairs divided in quarters so use a, a duckbill clip if you don't have duckbills I'm sure you do um, but if you don't you can use like the jaw clips right so if you're not going to be a hairstylist it doesn't have to be you know perfect as to how you hold your scissors it's just how we hold them is just gives us more control is there a specific comb I need to use because is it a hair cutting comb that you yeah, so this is this is a hair cutting comb. You want to have the comb that it's not like super flexible, right? Because if it moves around too much, you'll get uneven tension with your hair. And then you don't want the teeth to be too big. So you see the one side, the teeth are a bit finer than the other side. Honestly, there's so many different ways of cutting hair. I tend to have a bit more of a freestyle kind of method to how I cut hair. Then there's some people that are very stringent and, and very, um, you know, geometric and kind of by the book uh, kind of whatever works for you know each individual I find as long as your clients are happy who cares how you get there we start off with the first section is you want to make sure that um, that they are not crossing their legs because that will show uh, throw the shoulders off and you can end up with an uneven haircut tilt their head slightly forward. I'm gonna show you like a basic trim, right? So you want your sections to be fairly straight. First section, this is gonna be the guide of the haircut, right? So again, we're gonna make sure that it's uh, consistent moisture from roots to end. Be careful that the tension is not pulled too tight because if you pull the hair too tight, uh, hair will shrink when it dries. And especially, you said that uh, your nieces have curly hair. If you pull this too tight, and you cut it when it shrinks up, uh, when it's dry, it'll be con like considerably different. So you're also better to err on the side of less is more. You can always go back and cut more off afterwards. Right? You wanna comb it, you wanna make sure that there's no little loops or anything in the hair. Gently comb the hair straight down, right? And then you decide how much you wanna cut off. You do wanna make sure that when you're cutting hair that you're kind of eye level to where you're cutting and you don't, like, generally you wouldn't cut like this, you would be more like this, but just so you can see. Is it a straight cut? Yes, the perimeter you want to do a straight cut. Some, some people, they like to cut the back of a hair into a V. I personally hate that style. I don't think it actually looks like anything. I, I, I'm just not a fan of the look. The hair is cut into a V. I find you lose a lot of the weight. Uh, it just looks like, like when you're done, I feel it looks like it needs a haircut. Okay. <laughs> with my nieces who have curly hair, with this section, do I do straight across or do I cut the down, the down technique? The point cutting. It kind of depends, to be honest, because you could point cut the entire perimeter if you wanted to. That'll just give you a, uh, some leeway in case you screw up because it, it's not a com uh, completely straight line. Okay. So when you point cut hair, basically. The tips of the hair, right? Like the points of the hair, that would be kind of like the edge of your guide, right? And what that does, it allows for a bit more movement. Actually, I don't mind this with, uh, with, with straight hair either. It gives it a bit more of an edgier kind of feel to the ends of the hair. Does it feel soft? Is it like soft? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Again, if you kind of make any mistakes, you can kind of hide it by having that, uh, you know, kind of chopped into effect. Unless somebody wants a really geometric kind of feel to it or choppy, choppy layers. Um, normally, the perimeter I cut uh, blunt and the interior I cut point cut. That just tends to be my style and what I like to do. I find it so fascinating. Make sure you have straight sections. I'm in the habit of using my finger, so I can kind of do a straight section with my finger, but may, uh, maybe better not for you. Although because you're a makeup artist too who also does hair, you might actually be okay. Uh, but since I'm, gonna share, since I'm gonna share this with other people, I would say try and use your comb or uh, your clip to section the hair, because you wanna make sure that it's pretty straight. You have your guide underneath, right? So if you comb down the hair, you can see guide underneath, right? Does that give you a better view yeah. of that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So basically, when you comb these other layers down, you want to cut those pieces 
to match underneath. Periodically make sure that the person's head is in the same position and that they haven't crossed their leg. All of a sudden you might see that one side is like different than the other and that could be because you screwed up or it could be because your client keeps shifting around so you need to be mindful that they're not shifting around. And make sure that the hair feels consistently uh, wet. You want to cut hair with the, the consistent damp texture. So again, we're not pulling it tight, right? So if you see the roots up here, I'm not doing this. I'm combing, making sure that the hair is straight and together and there's no loops. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut these pieces to match up the guide here. And that, there we go, we're point cutting. And then as you're progressing, you just want to go through and then again, you're just slightly pulling the hair down and you're checking to make sure that it's even. When you're cutting somebody's hair, don't use their ears as a guide as to if the hair is even or not because people are asymmetrical. And so if you're trying to match up, you could end up with a really uneven haircut. So it's more about how the hair falls down. And when you're doing these sections too, make sure that you're not taking too big of a section because you don't want to lose your guide. Am I clear? You understand everything that I'm saying? Yeah, it's all there. It's very clear. <laughs> Perfect. It's useful that you've got the water spray as well, yeah. so it stays consistently down. This I think is by uh, Danico, but it's nice because it gives a good mist to it. They have these ones at um, uh, kitchen supply stores and even like the grocers, some of them have them uh, and they use them for oil. For oil? Yeah. So it's better to have that, that mist spray because it's finer, isn't it? Yeah. I know you want to make sure again that you're eye level because you don't want to be cutting looking down. If you're, if you're kind of cutting above, then what happens is you end up elevating the hair. So you want to make sure that you're keeping it all in the same kind of angle. You notice the tension. I'm not really pulling on the hair. And make sure that your tension... Can I see, can I see that more? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Because you want to make sure, again, that your, your tension stays consistent throughout as well. Because again, if you're, if you're kind of not really mindful and you're pulling this really tight, but then you don't pull um, as much tension on this side, then what happens is, is that'll spring up. And then I like to go through and I just kind of shake uh, the hair. Sometimes what I do as well is I'll get the person whose hair that I'm cutting, I'll get them to just kind of shake their head back and forth a little bit. Then I can see how the hair is falling, especially if somebody has curly hair. Curly hair has kind of a mind of its own, right? So you want, also want to be mindful yes. of how the hair will naturally fall. So if, if their crown, if the high point of the head is a bit further, have that kind of come to the back. And also again, you shake their hair around and see how their natural crown lies, right? Because if their crown, yeah. say if they have like a double crown or something and it's pulling this way, again, you don't want to force it to go into a direction that the hair wouldn't normally sit. Well, I mean, again, this might be a bit too much information considering, you know, you're not a hairstylist and it's just kind of helping people through uh, the quarantine at this point. Shaking the hair a lot to kind of see where it's going to naturally fall is going to give you some kind of um, guidance as to where you should be cutting the hair. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, completely. Does any scissors that you use for hair cutting, if you're going to always use them for hair cutting, do not use them on anything else. It'll ruin the blade. Okay. If you drop them, it'll throw the alignment off. So if you get professional scissors, and they hit the ground, I would take them to somebody that can check the alignment and adjust them if they need to. Okay. It doesn't really matter kind of which side um, that you start with. And yeah. and here, it just kind of depends. Everybody's different. I have some people that they want to kind of swing the hair up a little bit. Some like to have it angled down. Some like to have it straight across. Again, I would kind of shake through the hair and see the natural movement. Uh, you want to take that in consideration. Typically, either take the hair straight across or I like a little bit of an angle. And again, we want the hair to be combed straight down and be mindful of the person's ear. So you want to comb gently, lifting over the ear, even tension, so the same tension that you have uh, from the back. And 
and then you're just going to kind of continue on uh, again using the back as your guide, right? So you can either angle down, okay. straight across, or a little bit upwards if you like. When you is this like you? your base cut and then when you cut layers then you cut the layers in after? Uh, yes, exactly. It's called the exterior of your haircut so you always want to start with the exterior of the haircut and then go into the interior. You could go through and do some layers first but again I just want to keep it super basic. If you go in and do your layers first but then the layers that you put in you're taking off um, a lot of the layering in the perimeter, then you've just kind of wasted the time. And again, a little bit of water just to make sure that we have an even um, hydration texture to work with. It's like flipping to the other side, you just do the exact same thing that you're doing. So now I'm just checking over the haircut and making sure that we're even. I'm so excited to cut my sister's hair and I can't believe she's allowing me to do it. <laughs> I can't wait to see the pictures. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a little bit from the front and this is going to okay, help. So now I this is going to help to give me a guide for my layers. So I'm still doing the center parting. I'm following just along the hairline towards the ear. But then also to uh, give me a guide for the layers. Sorry, I don't want her to have a fringe. So I'm not cutting a fringe for you. And we'll continue on with our point cutting. I'm elevating it a little. It's going to give it a little bit of a bevel. Um, as well, just to add to the shape. Can you see okay? So generally, you're, yeah, so you lay the hair flat down, but in the front, you're elevating it slightly. Yeah, I mean, you could do this around the back as well, uh, just to keep it fairly basic. We don't want to pile on too much information. And I'm just rounding my fingers a little bit because it's going to start off a little bit shorter here, but then come around and it'll meet up to the end bits here. You see where that end bits at the sides are, right? So that just helps. It's going to blend in. And you can go through a little bit and then just freehand. Um, I'm just going to take off a little bit of that corner. And same thing, just again, section from your center part. Now I'm getting just to kind of the top of the ear. I'm bringing these pieces down. So it's the same technique, it's bit by bit at the front as well. Yeah, because you're creating your guide and then you're bringing uh, the hair over your guide uh, to cut. Even hydration. point cutting to match your guide. Yeah, I love it. I need to get me a magnetic bracelet. Oh, I love this. I bought this when I was in uh, New York. It's by Nicholas French. Now that we just have some soft layering around the front, then, uh, and we'll turn our grill around. We're going to create the guide for the layer at the back. So again, we're just going to kind of shake the hair. You want to see where that's going to fall, right? So you see that the hair is falling from here backwards. Basically, where that crown, where the hair is growing back, we want to comb that all back. We're going to pull up their section. This is going to be our guide for our layers, okay? So your layers too, it kind of depends on how much layering you want to do, right? If you 
if you're kind of dragging the layers uh, a little bit forward, you'll end up taking off less hair and you'll have longer layers, right? Okay. It just kind of depends on the angle that you want your layers. So let's just keep it simple. We're just going to take this section straight up. And basically, wherever you trim that to, that's where the shortest layer is going to be sitting, right? So we don't want to mull it. There'll be no Joe Dirt today, even though the Tiger King is very popular. And again, we're going to point cut. This you need to be careful because if you're too fast, you can end up chopping your hand. And that hurts, especially with brand new sharp scissors. And you don't want to cut past your knuckle because you're going to lose uh, the tension, the tensional shift in here. So basically, you're cutting from here to here, and then you're going to pick up a new section. And again, don't pull uh, even, we want even tension throughout the haircut. So that center part that you just cut here, as you go across that top layer, that is your guide, right? But yeah. you want the hair to be combed up straight from the roots from where it's growing. You don't want to have it dragged anywhere. Because anywhere that you drag it, you're going to change your layer. So, so it has to be straight up. Yeah. Again, there's so many other haircuts that you can end up doing with by dragging your sections and shifting angles. But we just want to keep it like super basic for all of our friends yeah. at home. So basically, it just yeah, confuses everybody. Yeah, that's what everybody. I was looking at because I know you're left-handed. So was, when I, when you first held the scissors, I was like, "Huh?" Because she's left-handed. I know. I do I do makeup and write with my left hand, but I cut hair with my right hand. But it's the way that I hold scissors and sectioning can be a bit confusing for some. So just you know, just to throw in another challenge for you. We're, using our guide from our layer, right? And you want to start with the center section. We're pulling up. This is So we're going to match. I've already kind of done a little bit of the sections, but we're going to match uh, with the top layer. It kind of depends. Okay. Like if you drag the bottom pieces, see these will fall down and it'll just do a subtle layering. Mix in with like, you know, shaking their hair and seeing how it lands. Because that's the thing too, it's like some, sometimes, just especially with somebody with curly hair, how the hair lands, you might be able to see, um, you maybe, maybe this section needs a little bit extra layering to it or some little bit of weight taken out, but I don't want to throw too many, too many dimensions in. There's just a little bit, I'm not taking anything off the bottom because I want to leave the weight at the bottom and we're just creating a little bit of a layer. I mean, if you were to take it and kind of bring the hair straight out and match it with the layer from the top and take this, and you're going to take a lot of the weight out through the middle, it's going to start looking a little bit Jennifer Aniston at Friends, which is fine because that's nice too. What I like is that you've pulled it up to give it tension, but then you've loosened it, but you know exactly where your guide is. I'm just kind of checking it over, making sure there's not any little pieces that I've missed. We're gonna start moving to the front sections. Oops. She's falling asleep. She is. She's so relaxed because I'm so calming. Like, yeah, I am. <laughs> sure. So if you drag these uh, layers forward, you're gonna end up cutting the layers yeah. of the front shorter. When you pull it back, they will okay. be a little bit longer. So it kind of just depends. Again, you just wanna use uh, your guide from your crown and I mean, again, I would say don't drag this section forward. Keep pulling these front layers back. It'll drag them so they'll be a bit longer through the front, um, but you'll still have them connected with the rest of the haircut. What time is it there right now? Uh, 
is nine minutes past ten. She looks fantastic and she's loving her new layers. We've cut uh, the top section. Now what we want to do is just go through and we're going to tie in the layers at the side. Same thing, we're coming from the, the crown, drag these pieces up and so we're just gonna connect the sides with the layers. So if you see, again point cutting. Yeah. Point cutting, are you holding the scissors slightly at an angle? Yes. Or head on? Slightly at an angle. And just watch, um, just watch as you're cutting that you kind of keep that same angle. Mm -hmm. It looks fab. Nice, right? Make sure you keep with your center parting. Check her out. She's looking good. She's you know, loving it. And um, the lipstick's the same color. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe her name is Moira. Shout out to my friend Lucky. It's so good. Oh, it's such a good show. I'm gonna be sad when it's over. Yeah. Okay. June oil. Uh, it's Persian secrets. Kind of like Victoria, but for the hair. I love the smell of this stuff. I know you can't smell it, but... So then you take your dice in. She's been long overdue for a good blowout. I bet your clients are really missing you. Well, I hope so. She's awfully quiet though. More time speaking to people and um, connecting with people than I did before. I've had a lot more people from the um, beauty collaborators group that have reached out to me too. That's a good little group. Yeah, I, I love the group. It's really kind of saved yeah. me a little bit, actually. She looks so fresh now. Yeah, right? I gave her an Olaplex treatment before. Did you? I did. I've colored her She's hair. She's so spoiled. She is. You know, and then when you when you have a haircut with a center part, then that means you can you can actually play with it and flip it back and yeah. forth. You know, okay. then you're not married to uh, a particular parting. Because if you cut hair with a side part, then what happens is when you flip the other pieces over, they end up being too long, right? So that's why a center part for me. Unless I have a client, because I do have some clients that they never really change their hair and they're always styling it in one particular uh, place. But otherwise, if you're going to have some versatility with your hair, whether it be like ponytails or, you know, updos or blowing it out, straightening it, flipping it a little bit from side to side, um, I would do it with the center part. Any questions? Any questions for no. the class? Would you like to see the back? Yeah. Nice. And see, this also too, because the layers are so subtle, right? Mm -hmm. It gives up the hair a little bit of movement. If you keep the layers long, it's a lot, you get a lot more shape from the hair. You have a lot more versatility especially in a humid climate, if your hair is like perfectly one length and it's humid, your hair is gonna be flat to your head. So you need to have a bit of, I mean, I, I, I don't understand hair that's completely one length unless you're going for a very 
geometric kind of shape. Like this is layered hair, you know? That's not one length. I'm taking a bit more of that June hair oil and just adding it kind of through the ends just to kind of rehydrate them. And then just working some more up through the hair. Again, you need to be careful and play with, like everybody's hair is different. Like when your hair is curly, it's naturally dehydrated, right? So you can take a lot more product in the hair than somebody's hair who's like perfectly straight. But just kind of play with it. And I would always start by putting products in the hair, like finishing products in the hair, like oils, mid shaft down, but then you run a little bit through the top of the hair. Because if you kind of just put it mid shaft down, but you don't put anything up here, what happens is you have all this great texture through the bottom, but you have different texture through the top. She's being all coy right now. She's happy. She's happy with her hair.